You don't know. No. Interesting. I know. Well, all right, here we're going to have to find Brother George, wherever he's at, and get him started there. It's good to see everybody smiling faces again on October 1st. Yay! Still having, still wonderful with the uh, uh, fall weather. Brother George, you out there somewhere? Oh, okay. So we will do wait just a minute. Um, how about we kind of change just a little bit? We'll go ahead and pray first. We would normally play after the song, but we'll pray. Let him get on up here, and then uh, uh, then we'll go ahead and, and proceed with sched with normal schedule. So let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity again to come uh, before you and with you. And we thank you, Father, for all that you've done for us this week. We thank you for the beautiful weather. We thank you, Father, for the wonderful church. And most importantly, we thank you for dying for us on the cross. We ask, Father, now that you open our hearts to the word of God, that you'll bless each and every one of us today, Lord Jesus, and just pray that uh, we can give ourselves to you more and more each day. Pray now, Father, that you... Uh, bless pastors that gives us the message, Lord Jesus. I pray that you bless the singing. And just pray, Father, that we uh, everything that we do and see here will honor you. Amen. All right. He's still a little busy, so how about we stand, find out what song we got here. We'll get everybody ready to go. So stand and grab your hymnals. We'll sing 643. Again, this is our new uh, our new chorus of the month. Brother George makes his way up here. He's uh, being a wonderful helping hand. So we'll go ahead and grab your hymnals. 643, stand as Brother George leads us. Amen. Sometimes when you're a greeter, you get caught greeting people. Imagine that. So. How many of you know this course? This is our new course of the month, Through the Eyes of Christ. Wow. All right. What I'm going to ask uh, Miss Judy to do is play it through one time so you get an idea of the chorus, and then maybe uh, I'll sing it for you, and then we'll all sing it together. So play it through for us one time. time through, okay? Go ahead, Miss Judy. Let me see the world through the eyes of Jesus. Let me hear the cries of the people. Just a few pages there to number 452 in your songbook. 452 in your songbook this morning. Four five two in your songbook.
seated, turn and shake hands with someone close by you. Smile warmly and welcome them in the name of the Lord this morning. All right, thank you. You may be seated. All right, just a few quick announcements here. Of course, we have tonight our uh, trustees meeting at 5 o'clock. Uh, preacher, would you like us down there at the other room? Down here, in here. Yep, so if we can get the trustees to meet, uh, we'll meet all down there in the other room for a few minutes. Then we following service at 6 o'clock tonight. The preacher's going to bring us our final message on Joshua. And everybody says, aww. Oh, no. That's okay. We'll keep preaching on Sunday nights anyway. Just not on Joshua. So we do have uh, our Faith Bible Institute sign up has just started uh, on Sunday. So if you were interested in, in getting into the class, if you've talked to some of the other classmates that are here, if that was something that you were interested in or you might look into, uh, sign-ups are going to be going on all month. If you have any questions, you can let us know um, how to sign up, where to sign up, how much it costs, all that stuff. And uh, if you'd still like to, you're still welcome to come out on Tuesdays for a class to get a sample of what we do get. Um, it has been very, very enlightening and very encouraging. So if you can make it out on a Tuesday night, we meet here at 6 uh, we do bring food. Uh, we just ask that you let us know ahead of time so those that are preparing the food for Tuesday can, can accommodate for everyone being there. And then we have our missionary, uh, which is um, Doug Claypool, will be coming here next Sunday. And we also have Miller's uh, next Sunday as well with Brother George, so you can come out with that. And then Tuesday and Friday, we have a couple events that we're going to be hosting uh, that second week of October that uh, if you have the opportunity to, we'd like help with. Um, on Tuesday, we're going to be having probably about 50 men, you think? 40? 40, 40 or 50 men, uh, men and women, of course, for our Midwest Baptist Fellowship. Uh, it's an uh, event that goes from church to church, just like our teen activity. And we have a bunch of preachers that come from all around and they bring their families and church members, and you're also welcome to come too if you can if you can make it. It usually starts about 10 o'clock, right? Service starts at 10. Service at 10. We usually have donuts and coffee between uh, 9.30 and 10 o'clock. 
so you're more than welcome to come to that. Uh, it lasts usually about two or three hours. We have about three preachers, and then uh, we'll have lunch afterward. It's always a great uplifting time. So that's on Tuesday, so if there's a way that you might be able to help us in some way, uh, let Pastor know. Uh, pa uh, Pastor does have a list of things that, that would like to be accomplished for that. Then also on the following Friday, Friday evening, we're having our teen activity here as well, uh, which is our um, Northern, in Northern Indiana Youth Rally, where again we'll have several churches, often the same people that come on Tuesdays will be here on Fridays as well. And we're going to have probably about 80 teens here for that. So we'll need help with, with service and, and uh, uh, possibly games and food and things. Uh, if you have any questions, you can see Jason and I are pastor. And then we can help you out with those. Uh, so if you can help with those, that would be great. And then on the 22nd, I cannot say this last name without butchering it. Seacrest, okay. We're going to have Brother Steve Seacrest here from Lakeland CEM. What is that? Child, child evangelism ministry. Okay. What's that? Yep, it's the one there on 30. Uh, so he will be here then as well. And then, of course, uh, all month is our missions month. So keep in mind of our missions uh, uh, missionaries. If you have any questions, you have a lot of them back there on the board. And so each month we're going to have a different type of missionary, or each Sunday, a different type of missionary here. Thank you. Yesterday we had a fall, we called it a closet cleanout day, and uh, I would say mission accomplished. Uh, if you look at the closet here, uh, we've got it pretty well empty. Uh, Ms. Heather tackled that, and, uh, and Ms. Fishburne tackled the closet downstairs. It's a mechanical room and furnace room, and Sandy took care of the other closet down there. Now we also made some changes. Closet where the toys used to be and tablecloths and all that kind of stuff, that closet now has a lock on it. Uh, that's where most of the flowers will be that uh, Miss Sandy and the other ladies that do some stuff here in the auditorium will be. So if you're used to getting child toys and stuff, you're not going to have access to that room because we don't want any more flowers. There. But my only comment is, is that there's some stuff downstairs on one of the tables, some baskets and that kind of stuff that we're never going to use here for decorations or anything like that. We left them down there for anybody that might want them. But here's the key. If they're still on the table tonight, at the end of the service, they're going to go where a lot of the rest of the stuff went that we no longer keep, and that trash can's getting full. So if you want it, take it today. But for those of you that helped yesterday, uh, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, you made true the, that many hands made light work. Uh, we got a lot done in a very short amount of time. Got some stuff reorganized in the garage. Got some stuff put in the shed. Got three closets uh, emptied and sorted and, and uh, rearranged. So we appreciate those who are able to come out and those of you that weren't able to we appreciated your prayers to make it make it very very quick work so thanks a lot and we'll do uh, something similar to that like that or probably around in the spring so thank you folks for helping and it is true many hands make light work in about two hours we were able to uh, get that stuff accomplished so we do appreciate those who were here uh, as far as let me just say real quick about the pastor's lunch um, if you can help serve or, or there might be a few things still needed to, to be provided you can see my wife Laura so I'm passing the, the buck, the baton <laughs> to her. Uh, so uh, she's kind of seeing to that uh, meal on that uh, Tuesday. So, all right, as far as prayer requests uh, are concerned.
I've got a birthday. Actually, I have two. But somebody's was yesterday, and somebody's was Friday. So we're going to sing happy birthday to Adam. He sits back there. He does all of our sound, does a great job at it. And then the preacher. But I think maybe for the preacher, we ought to do something a little special, but maybe maybe better not. So let's sing happy birthday to Adams and uh, Preacher Rich. Uh, he was, I don't know, oh, I'm not going to leave his age alone because he'll preach at me next. He's, if, I say, if I pick on him, he'll preach at me next time, and I give him plenty of excuses for that anyways. But let's sing happy birthday first before to the, to the two fellows before we uh, uh, sing our last song. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday Adam and Preacher Rich, happy birthday to you. All right, stand with me and turn to number 421 in your songbook. For those of you that normally go to junior church, Mrs. Fishburne's back there. She'll meet you over here at the door as we start the first verse, okay? So if you go to junior church, Mrs. Fishburne will meet you over here at the side door when we start that first verse. Number 421 in your songbook, Higher Ground. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Josh, you want to do your special or you want to wait? All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you for your singing this morning. This is Missions Month, and uh, so that's why the, the course we chose and things, but I uh, have three different missionaries coming over the course of this next month, and so I hope that you will plan on being here. And by the way, next week, the Claypools, they are from, they're on furlough right now from uh, San Tome and Principe, the islands off of West Africa. And uh, so it'll be good to see them again. If you've not met them yet, you'll enjoy them and their family. Uh, they have three kids, four kids, I don't remember. Uh, at least two girls and a boy, maybe a third girl. I kind of lost track. But, uh, but uh, they're doing a, a, a great work. They're being faithful uh, on the field. And it's one of those fields that, that uh, they were there the first whole term. And really, I mean, you would look at it and say, well, they didn't accomplish anything. But you know what it, uh, if you're, if some of those lands, some of those missions, you understand what it means to lay groundwork. <laughs> Uh, and uh, to be, get involved and, and get in people's lives and things and lay some grammar. But God has been blessing, so I hope you'll be here next week for them. We will take a love offering for them uh, as well next week, uh, separate from our regular offering. So uh, you can kind of think about that and plan for that. At the end of the month of October then, uh, we're going to have our Faith Promise Sunday. Uh, we did this last year, and so we're going to renew uh, our, our uh, uh, pledges to the Lord for missions this coming year. And so you can be praying about that as well. Open your Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. Understand when you talk about missions, you realize missions starts where? At home. And I'm not talking about just 
the church here, but it starts with us, doesn't it? And so uh, hopefully, maybe lay just a little bit of groundwork. We tried to do that a little bit last week as well. But 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 17, about letting God work. And I'm going to talk and preach this morning a message entitled, Growing in Grace. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 17 and verse 18. Follow along as I read. It says, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But, he says, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Let's open our time in the Word in prayer. Father, bless this time in Your Word. Again, use it to encourage us, strengthen us, help us. Father, we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. A mother pleaded with the psychiatrist and said, Doctor, you've got to do something about my son. He said, what seems to be the problem? She says, well, he won't stop eating mud pies. She says, I get up in the morning, he's out in the backyard eating mud pies. I get home from work, he's in the, he's in the yard eating mud pies. The psychiatrist reassured her and said, oh, give the kid a chance. It's all a part of growing up. It's just a phase. It'll pass. And she said, well, it better, because I don't like it, and neither does his wife. <clears throat> God expects us to do what? grow, right? <laughs> to grow up. Uh, I want to talk some more about growing in grace. Look at verse number 18 again. He says, grow in grace. But what I want us to understand this morning, we're not going to take long, but what I want us to understand is growing in grace is not a matter of how much we know about God or even how much we do for God. People can grow in knowledge, <laughs> that is, having Bible truth in our heads and never grow in grace. Having Bible truth shown in our lives. We can read the Bible every day and go to church every time the doors are open and still not grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me illustrate it this way. Let's say I make a decision to, uh, to get more uh, physically fit, all right? And so I say, well, I'm going to I'm gonna go to the gym every day. That's a good start, isn't it? And so every day I go down to the gym for an hour, every day. I go down to the gym, I take my lawn chair, I sit there in the middle of the, the gym and watch everybody else work out. <laughs> Is that going to work? I don't think so. Not to accomplish my goal. <laughs> Same thing goes spiritually. I can go to church every week. I can read my Bible every day. But does that mean I'm growing? Not necessarily. Now I could brag to people. I could say, I go to the gym for an hour every day. <laughs> but see, it's not making any difference in my life. Physically. Same thing spiritually. We can go to church every week and read the Bible every day, be in church, uh, even serve in the church. And we can brag and say, I'm doing great. Oh, I go to church every Sunday. I read my Bible every day. You see, it's not a matter of, of how, much, how many hours you spend in church. It's whether we're being changed by God's uh, power in our lives. The question is, am I closer to God today than I was yesterday? Am I allowing God's grace to flow through me? Three things quickly this morning. <clears throat> and we have no uh, PowerPoint to go with us this morning, so you have to pay attention, okay? <laughs> uh, if you want to jot the points down in the bulletin or so. But as we mature physically, but let's apply it spiritually this morning, some things are going to change. Number one, our attitude will change. Look at 2 Peter chapter 3. Again, in verse number 18, we read the verse, but it says, grow in grace. So that word there means in graciousness, okay? It speaks of exhibiting joy and patience and long-suffering in our lives, regardless of circumstances. We're able to extend kindness and grace to others, even to those who wrong us, even to those who may never reciprocate that grace or that kindness. By the way, that's the meaning of the word grace, is it not? Undeserved. <laughs> You say, well, they don't deserve my kindness. Well, guess what? We didn't deserve God's favor either, did we? And so we need to show kindness and, and graciousness to all around us. And you know as well as I do, we live in a self-centered world. That's why children from the time they can speak, they know one of the first words, first words probably no, usually. <laughs> but one of the other first words they learn is mine, right? <laughs> uh, we didn't have to teach them that, did we? <laughs> that, that comes what we call naturally, okay? Uh, it, it, but... Same thing spiritually. We live in a self-centered world. It's all about my rights. How dare you say that or how dare you do that? Don't you know who I am? 
It's all about me, all about my rights. But aren't you glad this morning that Jesus was willing to give up his rights for you and for me all the way to Calvary? As those who have received the grace of God, we're commanded to exhibit and to live out that grace every day in our lives. Look at 1 Peter. Go back just a little bit here. Towards the front of your Bible is the first epistle of Peter, chapter 4. Let me read just a couple of verses. 1 Peter, chapter 4, and verse number 8, where it says this, Above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, love and action, charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, what gift? He's going to tell us here in a moment. He's talking about the grace of God. Even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. And so he says, as those who've received the grace of God, we have a responsibility to others. A responsibility to one another. Uh, Number one, he tells us there, uh, again in verse number uh, 8, to have charity. It says charity covers a multitude of sins. How do you... uh, we have some who've been married for several years in here, many years. How do you, how do you put up with your spouse? Love, right? <laughs> uh, it covers a multitude of, of faults, doesn't it? Uh, but he says here, we're to show that love one for another. And then in verse 10, it tells us we are stewards. We're stewards of all that God gives us, but we're stewards of his grace. He's given us his grace. He's given us his love shed abroad in our hearts. And he says we're stewards of that. It's, it's for us to use, not just to hold on to and say, isn't that nice? I feel so warm and fuzzy. God loves me, and God was so gracious. No, it says we're, we're stewards. Uh, we're, we're to use those things. We're to live out those things in our daily life. And so as we grow in grace, our attitude will change. Uh, instead of being demanding, instead of being judgmental, instead of writing people off as hopeless causes, we're going to begin to see people through God's eyes. As ones that he loves, ones that he died for. When we're filled with grace, people will see Christ living in us. And so number one, if we're growing in grace, our attitude will change. Secondly, as we grow in grace, our appetite will change. Second Peter chapter 3, again, verse, eight, the same, or verse 18, the same verse, but the last part, he goes on. He says, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now understand, he's not just talking again about facts. <laughs> Uh, or, 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 or uh, things that we can learn and, and, and so forth here, memorize, and that sort of thing. It's more than that. When he talks about growing in knowledge here, he's talking about experiential knowledge. That is, it's not, uh, it's not about knowing more about God, it's about knowing God more. Yeah. There's a difference, isn't there? Knowing God more. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, Jesus said, Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. And so uh, now, as we grow in grace, we want more of the things of God in our life. You know, a healthy baby has a healthy appetite, doesn't it? Uh, if a child is not eating, they're, they're either sick or, not to, not to get gruesome, but, or they're dead. I mean, there's, there's a problem. If there's no appetite, there's a problem. There's sickness somewhere. And so it is spiritually. If a child ate only once a week, you'd be pretty alarmed, wouldn't you? Well, so it is spiritually. If we eat only once a week, for example, when we come to church, is the only time we feed on the things of God, we're, gonna be in, we're not going to be growing in grace. We're going to be in pretty sad shape spiritually. And so a healthy spiritual diet will include, number one, it will include consistent study of the, of the Word of God. Consistent study of God's Word. Not just on Sunday, uh, but every day. Make it a part of our life. And again, not just to... Not just to to learn, oh, that's interesting, uh, or, or to, to, to fill our heads with it, but uh, so that we can uh, understand who God is. Um, and what goes in must come out, right? Have we all learned that? What goes in uh, must come out. If we feed on bitterness, we feed on negativity, we feed on uh, those types of things, what's that going to produce? Negativity, uh, bitterness, anger. But on the other hand, if we feed on the, on the things of God, in fact, uh, Paul put it this way, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, uh, we're to do what? We're to 
dwell on these things, think on these things. So if we fill ourselves with those things, what's going to come out? Truth, honesty, uh, purity, all those sorts of things. And uh, you've seen the illustration before, but let me see. My glass is half empty, but, but uh, you have a glass of water, all right? And uh, you can see very clearly, nice, clean glass of water. And when, when, you get sh- when you get shaken, when somebody comes and bumps up against you, and this spills out, what comes out? Water, because we filled it with water. Now, if this was uh, uh, dirty, muddy, pond scummy water, what would come out if it got spilled? <laughs> dirty, scummy. Now, you get clean water out, right? And so what we put in, what we pour in, what we fill ourselves with is what comes out when we get jostled. <laughs> What comes out uh, when, when, uh, when we get frustrated? What comes out uh, when, when somebody bumps into us, so to speak? <laughs> and so, uh, number one, we have, there will be a consistent study of God's Word. Our appetite will change, and we'll want more of what God has for us. Secondly, a consistent prayer life is part of a healthy spiritual diet. Now, they tell us <clears throat> the average Christian prays, guess how many minutes a day? <laughs> Three minutes a day. Three minutes a day, the average Christian. Now, uh, that's just about, I suppose, enough time. Uh, God is good. God is great. Thank you for this food about three times a day, okay? But if that's all, let me ask you, in any relationship, how do you get to know somebody? (laughs) Spending time with them, right? Uh, And if all you spend is three minutes, I tell you what, when I was, uh, sometimes it seems like that now because my wife's always working our schedules, but but, uh, when, when we were dating, my wife and I were dating, guess what? I sure want to spend more than three minutes a day <laughs> with her to find out more about her, what she likes, and, and, and how I can please her, and that sort of thing. And, and that's the way it is with the Lord. We ought to spend time with Him in His Word and in prayer. Uh, you can't get to know anyone well with three minutes a day. Yeah. By the way, let me tell you this. <laughs> Since we picked on the average Christian, the average preacher, this is, again, I, I don't know who all they, they surveyed or polled, but the average preacher spends seven minutes a day in prayer. <laughs> Does that not tell you why our churches are in the trouble that they're in in America today? But, but nevertheless, we need to spend time with him. So a, a healthy diet will consist of a consistent uh, intake or study of the Word of God, consistent prayer life, and also, indeed, consistent worship habits. Why do we, why do we gather together in a place like this? I mean, you could watch, and, and often, people often say, oh, I watch so-and-so on TV, the preacher on TV, or I, I you know, have all these things out there, and of course, media, you can get anything, anybody you want, any time of day on the, on the internet and so forth. Yeah. But why do we gather together in a place like this? <laughs> because we need the fellowship. We need the encouragement. We can uh, encourage each other and strengthen each other in the things of God. You can't get that on a TV screen, okay? <laughs> and so, uh, and, and by the way, we, we do live stream this, and so there are shut-ins, and so uh, I'm glad they're a part of it in this way. Uh, but it's, it's good to be together, isn't it? In the, in the house of God. Uh, and so consistent worship happens. And by the way, as we grow in grace, this is evidently lost on some people, but uh, I'm being sarcastic, but, uh, but as we grow in grace, we're going to be more faithful, not less faithful yeah. to the things of God. Yet, how often is it the opposite? Oh, we get excited when, we, when we're first saved, and, and uh, we, we want to be there, and we want to do things, we want to, we wanna, you know, we're, we're so uh, persistent on obeying God and doing, and, and just being faithful but as time goes on, what happens? Well, just like the child that opens the present on Christmas morning, uh, about a day later, two days later, it loses its luster, uh, and we get, uh, uh, we get apathetic and those sorts of things. So we've got to guard against that, right? This is a, a continual thing in our life to make sure we're feeding on the right thing. So our attitude will change. Our appetite, appetite will change. I almost said aptitude. That's not a word. But appetite will change. Thirdly and finally... And for this, we're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. But thirdly, as we grow in grace, our actions will change. Our attitude, our appetite, and our actions. And let me just read a few verses, and we're almost done. 1 Peter chapter 4. Turn too far. There we go. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 1. He says, For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise in, with the same mind. For he that hath suffered of the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he should no longer live for the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. And now look what he says, verse 3. For the time past of our life may suffice us 
to have wrought the will of the Gentiles, or the will of the flesh, will of the world, if you want to put it there, when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and ab uh, abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that she run not with them to the same excess of riot, even speaking evil of you. Verse 5, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. See what he tells us there in verse number 3, verse number 4. People ought to notice a difference. A very real difference in our life. It says to the point they think you're, it's strange. Why don't you do the things you used to do? Uh, why don't you chime in here? Why don't you do this? Why don't you go here? Why don't you? And it says here, they'll notice, right? A difference in your life. People ought to be able to notice a very real difference in our lives. A difference, whether it's at work, when someone, something goes wrong and we normally blow our stack. <laughs> or at home when your kids uh, or your husbands <laughs> do something you don't like. Uh, or, or uh, don't do something that, that you think they ought to do. <laughs> uh, it, it, they ought to notice a difference, whether it's uh, on the highway when someone cuts you off and you choose to say a few choice words or, or uh, you attempt to even. I want to ask for raise hands, okay? <laughs> uh, or whether it's on, I don't know why you always have to pick on it, but, or whether it's on Facebook posting things that you have no business uh, posting as a child of God. Things with ungodly language. Things with, with shameful innuendo. What do you suppose the world thinks? When they look on your, and I, I don't troll Facebook, please don't misunderstand, I don't, you know, but uh, I, I am on Facebook occasionally and one, once in a rare while post something. Uh, but I tell you, I examine the source, I examine everything before I ever do that. But what do you think people think when they, when they look and they see uh, this that you've shared? It's so easy to click share, isn't it? <laughs> But they see this thing, it's, it's got language or it's got something in it that, that uh, uh, sh should never be on the mind of a believer. And then they look at your next post, I love Jesus. <laughs> what do you think the world thinks of that? <laughs> They're not thinking, well, there's a man of God. <laughs> no. They're thinking there's a big hypocrite, right? <laughs> and we know people use that excuse a lot, don't they? There's a lot of hypocrites in church, that's true. A lot of hypocrites at work, a lot of hypocrites everywhere you go. That shouldn't keep you from going. But the sad thing is, it's oftentimes true. <laughs> it's oftentimes true. But our relationship with God never stays the same. We're either growing closer to Him or we're drifting away from Him. And one of those major barometers of that is whether we are exhibiting His grace in our lives. Exhibiting His grace in our lives. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes this morning. <clears throat> We do have communion in just a few moments here, so we're going to wrap up uh, this portion of our service. But let me just say this. You cannot grow in grace if you don't first have his grace in your heart. And so if you're here this morning, this has been a message primarily for believers. Understand that, for those that know Christ and, and uh, understand how we ought to live. But, but if you're here this morning and you say, I, I don't have joy. I don't have that peace. I don't have a, a, a starting place for that. I don't have an assurance of a relationship with, with God. I hope this morning that you will let us pray for you and, and ponder these things for just a moment. This is not about, again, just being happy uh, in our circumstances. It goes far deeper than that. It's about having joy in our heart, thanksgiving in our heart, in all things. We talked about in Sunday school a little bit there. But being able to, to exhibit, being able to share those, uh, those things with others because God has bestowed it in our heart. But it's about more than this life. It's about eternity. And uh, if you've never been confronted with that uh, this morning, I would encourage you to, to think on that. And uh, we'd love to help you this morning. love to pray with you or share with you uh, very simply from God's Word how you can know you have a relationship with God. And let me tell you this. It doesn't come by our goodness. It doesn't come by... Uh, we could... We could, again, be in church every week. We could do all the sorts of things that, that the preacher tells us to do and still be on our way to hell because it's not about that. It's about what Jesus Christ did in our place. And so if you're here this morning and you don't have a relationship with him, just understand he loves you and he wants to welcome you to himself this morning. And what's required simply is, number one, an admission uh, of your sin, admission that you need a Savior. 
secondly, uh, to believe that Jesus indeed died for you and in your place. And then thirdly, simply, the Bible says, those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. So if you'll admit, believe, and receive him this morning, he will welcome you into his family. But then as Christians this morning, how, how are you showing grace in your life? How are you showing grace to your spouse? How are you showing grace to your coworkers, to your neighbors, to one another in the body of Christ? Maybe you need some growth. We all do, by the way. I'm not trying to point, we, but, but maybe there's a specific thing God has spoken to your heart about this morning. Before we close in prayer, two real quick questions on those two points. Number one, is there anyone here this morning who would say, I'm not sure my relationship with Christ, that I've entered into uh, that, that living relationship. I don't remember a time when I, when I prayed and personally received Christ as my Savior. Would you pray for me? That's all I want to do. If you raise your hands, I'll say thank you. Put it right back down. I'll not point you out. I'll not embarrass you. But you say, I've never, uh, or I don't recall a time that I trusted Christ as my Savior. Would you please pray for me? Anyone very quickly? Wait just a few seconds. I'll pray for you. All right, thank you. As believers, maybe there's some here you would say, uh, I need some grace. <laughs> I need grace so I can exhibit that grace in my life every day. I need to grow in grace in some area of my life. Would you please pray for me? I'm not looking for raised hands, but this is just an acknowledgement to God, not to me. But I'll pray for you as we close. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I need grace in my life. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you for the strength and, and, and all that you do give us, the grace that you do give us. If not for your grace, we would not be here today. And so I thank you, Father, for it. Uh, it's all because of, uh, of your love and grace. But, Father, I pray this morning there were some raised hands, areas of life that you have, have spoken to, and that's between them and you. But I pray that, uh, indeed, you would minister to their hearts. And, Father, that you would help us all uh, to learn what it means to walk and to live in grace and, and to grow in the grace and the knowledge uh, of, of Jesus Christ. And that we would exhibit that uh, every day of our lives. Uh, and so, Father, uh, help us in that endeavor. And this is what missions is all about, really, uh, is about showing uh, what you've done in our lives to those around us. So, Father, help us, we pray, in these closing moments. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your hymnals <clears throat> as our men will prepare for communion in just a moment here. But let's first of all sing number, hymn, hymn number 404. 404. And uh, unless the Lord leads different, we'll sing the first and last verses. But if the Lord's spoken to your heart, uh, uh, talk to him this morning, will you? The altar's open as well if you need to come apart and pray. Whatever the Spirit's leading you to do. 404, standing together, please. divine let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine amen let's sing that last verse together please there are depths of love that i cannot know till i cross the
This is typically here at First Baptist Church the first Sunday of every month uh, and some other special times during the year, but uh, we commemorate uh, this uh, gift from God to His disciples out of communion. We call it the Lord's Supper, the Lord's Table. But uh, it's just a reminder of the time that Jesus was in, his, in the upper room with His disciples just about ready to depart this earth. And he gave them some precious reminders. I don't think they knew at that, understood at that time these were going to be reminders uh, because uh, they were taken by surprise even by all those events in those following days. But, but uh, he took the bread, he broke it, and he said, this is my body, take eat, this is broken for you. He took the cup, he said, this is my blood, which is shed for many. And so this is a reminder to us as Christians uh, of what Christ did for us on the cross. So if you're here this morning and you know Christ as your Savior, uh, you're welcome to participate as the elements go by. Uh, the other admonition scripture gives us is to make sure that, that we partake worthily. That just has to do with our heart uh, relationship with God. And so if you're here this morning, you're saved. Uh, and uh, secondly, you can examine your own heart, as scripture tells us to do there in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. Uh, and uh, uh, make sure that uh, we are on right footing with God. Uh, then uh, I encourage you to participate this morning. First of all, the element of the bread. Representing. Nothing special about these, these elements in themselves, but... As representatives, they become special to us, the reminders of what he's done for us. So, first of all, the element of the bread uh, reminds us of his body uh, that was bruised, that was pierced, uh, nailed to that cross for you and for me. And so I'm going to ask uh, Brother George if you ask the blessing on that element, please. says Jesus took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it. He said, take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. Yes. Brother Richard, if you'll ask the blessing, please.
same manner also he took the cup. When he supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament, my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. We'll close with a chorus together. And also, uh, on our communion Sundays, we have our deacons fund uh, offering uh, available at the back on your way out. That's our benevolence fund. For those within our church that have needs and occasionally for those outside our church as well. But uh, that will be at the back, no obligation, but on your way out if you'd like to give to that. Uh, I know there are some needs right now that uh, uh, are prevalent. So if you would help uh, one another, uh, that's what that is for. So, But let's close. Um, I didn't think about what chorus we'd sing. What's a good chorus to close with? For God so loved the world. You know that one? We sang a time or two before. Uh, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son to die on Calvary's tree from sin to set me free. We'll try it anyway, all right? We'll, all right, let's try it as long as I can remember the words. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son to die on Calvary's tree from sin to set me free. Someday he's coming back. What glory that will be, wonderful his love to me, for me. I think we got the words mostly right. All right. <laughs> Thank you for coming this morning. We'll close with a quick word of prayer, but tonight, 6 o'clock, we're going to finally finish. It's been a few weeks uh, since we've been in Joshua because of Friend Day. We had Singspiration. We were gone one week, and then last week I felt led to bring a different message. So, but Lord willing, we'll finish that series tonight, and we'll end on a good note in Joshua. So I hope you're here tonight, 6 o'clock. Uh, trustees, if you can meet at 5 o'clock, uh, nothing real major, but just uh, it's the season uh, that's approaching means we need to make sure some things are taken care of uh, before winter hits us and so forth. So, so if you can be here at 5 o'clock, we'd appreciate that. All right, let's uh, close in prayer. And uh, Brother Jason, would you please do that for us?